welcome you here. And um, we want to begin this morning uh, with uh, folks from Activate Allen County and uh, uh, Kayla Monfort and uh, Courtney O'Banion are here uh, to announce a new partnership. So please come up. start us off. Thank you so much for having us. We are excited to announce that we have our eighth and ninth stores joining our Healthy Happens Here program. We've talked about it a lot. Um, our Healthy Happens Here small store program bringing uh, fresh produce, healthy options, great signage, visibility to those healthy options in our smaller stores here in the county. So Ruler Foods has joined us. Both of the locations, one on Elm Street and one on Elida Road, have both joined us. So they already um, if you've see, seen the stores, they already offer produce in their store already. So what we're doing is going through and highlighting all those options with great signage, visibility, uh, to allow customers to know what those options are. And that includes all the whole grain items, the brown rices, uh, the whole grain cereals, a lot of options within the store. So not just the produce section, but also throughout the entire store. Um, we'll be uh, now with a signage of their Activate approved items. So customers will be able to visibly see and understand what those options are. In addition to that, there'll be a recipe rack that will be permanently a part of the store in the produce section that will have uh, multiple different recipes for healthy items, um, healthy recipes, budget-friendly recipes so that customers will be able to grab those, uh, hopefully try a new item. So what we're doing is kicking off the partnership with uh, St. Rita's Health Partners and we are be going uh, to the Elm Street store on Friday, April 7th from 1 to 3 to uh, allow customers and community members to come out, see the signage, and have a great event. We'll have uh, live remotes from iHeart uh, media will be out there uh, with live radio, um, their live radio. Uh, we'll have healthy snacks. We will have Lima Allen County um, WIC educators. We'll have the SNAP educators. We'll have Bluffton Nutrition Dietetic students out with healthy snack options. We'll have St. Rita's. Uh, we'll be providing uh, a dietitian to answer nutrition questions. They'll be providing blood pressure screenings, body fat analysis. Um, so we have a lot of great opportunities um, for residents to come out and really get uh, health and wellness screening, but also see the uh, new signs at Ruler Foods as well. And I will let Courtney also. So thank you, Kayla. So I just want to, um, like I said, um, thank Activate Allen County for the continued partnership that we have with them, um, promoting healthy communities within our Lima community. We think it's very important. And we at St. Rita's, part of our mission is to build healthier communities. And I think that this food tour at um, Ruler Foods is gonna do just that. And like I said, we have Heather here today with us, who is one of our dietitians, and we'll have a couple more dietitians who will be guiding you through Ruler Foods, and we're really excited to kick this off. So hopefully you'll be able to join us on April 7th during our kickoff event, and maybe you'll even be able to sign up for one of these tours and maybe have Heather or one of our other dietitians guiding you through this journey. So thank you very much. We have um, releases and also some additional flyers if anyone's interested in having some flyers posted. have those here, too. Thank you. Well, this is a very timely um, announcement, particularly given the article in today's paper about the overall health uh, index for Allen County, which uh, apparently has uh, declined. Uh, you know, I think we have... Uh, uh, Activate Allen County has been engaged for several years in uh, promoting uh, uh, a variety of approaches to uh, healthy living. Uh, obviously, the dietary considerations are ones that have to be uh, thought about in every household, and I think making it uh, convenient for folks to be able to get uh, fresh uh, fruits and vegetables is part and parcel of of that whole um, attempt to en engage people at a very practical level about uh, how they feed their families and themselves. So I want to applaud this continuing effort. Uh, I think I, I've shopped at Ruler Foods there on Elm Street. I know the quality of the, of the produce and the fruit that's there. Uh, it's, it's good food and we want to encourage people to uh, take advantage of this, along with the coaching that I think is being provided. It's, all of us can discover, if we could each discover maybe once a month a new recipe that we'd like to cook with, I, I find that kind of a taking it one step at a time, you 
learn a new way to, to cook or a new uh, vegetable that you hadn't cooked with before. Sometimes uh, vegetables are a little challenging if you haven't worked with one before. Um, and being coached and being able to do that, like I just figured out how do you take an, how you open up an avocado. Simple thing, but I had never cut it around and then twisted it. Well, that's pretty easy. I was always challenged by what that avocado looked like, and I thought I might mess it up. Well, it's just take it's little practical things like that that open up a food food item for you, and suddenly you become kind of proficient at it. So we want to encourage people to be adventurous and healthy in what they're doing. So thank you. Um, also, Tammy uh, Goff is here from the uh, health department uh, concerning the uh, and, and representing the Maternal Infant Task Force. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning. <clears throat> yes, thank you again for having me here today. I am here to discuss the efforts of the Allen County Public Health and its Maternal and Infant um, Health Task Force in the area of reducing infant mortality, particularly in the area of safe sleep. The Ohio Department of Health has included safe sleep as one of its priority strategies for the years 2016 and 17 in um, um, efforts to reduce infant mortality across the state. At Allen County Public Health, we distribute pack and plays, which are portable cribs and portable play pens that can be used as a safe sleep space for infants. Um, in the past five years, Allen County has had five deaths, five, excuse me, seven deaths that are attributed to SIDS or sudden infant death syndrome, which is a sleep related death. So um, that is a priority here in our area as well. In the past year, Allen County Public Health has been able to distribute 158 pack and plays or portable cribs and play pins, and we currently have allotted over 200 more um, throughout the remainder of this year. We have arrangements with both hospitals that they know where to refer to, as well as have a few um, pack and plays in place on their OB floors. They are required now on OB floors upon release of a, a new mom and her baby to ask if that mother has a safe sleep space for their infant. And if they do not, then they are to do what they can to help um, that person find the safe sleep. So that's a, a nice arrangement we have with the hospitals. Um, we have every reason to believe that even after this allotment is through this year, we will be able to continue to distribute those uh, pack and plays. Um, they are for income eligible families, and that is a, a scale that is very similar to those that are on um, WIC or Women's Infant and Children Program, as well as Medicaid. Um, and uh, we do require that they make an appointment. We don't like drop-ins because there is an educational component that we go over what is called the ABCs of safe sleep. Um, A stands for alone, no co-sleeping with a mom or infant, so um, even twins should not be sharing the same sleep, um, sleep space. Um, B is on their back. Um, the recommendation for positioning has tended to change over the years. Um, my older sister, she was told to do it one way, I was told to do it a different way, and now it's different again on their back. But numbers show consistently that on their back is the safest sleep position for an infant. And then the C is for in a crib or a proved um, safe sleep space. So that's why we are pleased to offer the cribs and provide the education on the alone and the back to sleep. So, thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> and Rick Stolle is here from the Parks Department. We, with the spring weather uh, coming up, we have a special duty to um, pay attention to. <laughs> Mr. That's a very kind way to put it, Mayor. Um, at this time of year, well, if, let me give you a little background. The last couple of years, we have um, kind of updated, or uh, I should say upgraded our uh, approach with uh, our friends, the Canadian geese throughout the city, primarily in the parks and along the uh, river walk. Um, so we have uh, gotten together with uh, the Hot Department, Natural Resources, specifically with the Department of uh, Division of Wildlife and what we can and can't do over the years. Um, we've learned uh, a great deal. But just so you're aware, so the community's aware, we are continuing with, with our plan 
And um, <clears throat> this is pretty much a calendar year and what we do dur during different times uh, with that, with, with, the, with the whole uh, development of, of the geese. Uh, we found that as you uh, move geese from their habitat, they tend not to come back. And if they don't come back, they don't reproduce in those spaces and things just happen naturally. So we've been working with folks in the city and uh, of course our, uh, our construction maintenance folks, our, our parks crew, as well as our rangers in trying to keep the geese moving and, and out of spaces that tend to cause problems. Uh, they're called geese or goose conflicts. So what we're, we're trying to do, again, find different ways to, to move the geese along and to uh, keep them from nesting in the same spots year after year after year, developing in, in, uh, in, in the problems. We're not the only ones that are going through this. Uh, after talking to a number of communities throughout Northwest Ohio in particular, um, there are other different, there are different ways of doing it, but at the end of the day, the whole idea is to try to move them along, and that's what we're trying to do. So you may see us out there um, actually not so much as herding them, but pushing them along, walking through flocks. Um, our rangers are out there with um, uh, blanks, shotgun uh, blanks uh, to, to scare the geese and to make them uncomfortable in those spots. So, um, and we are also reaching out to members of the community to get out with us and walk as they're walking to help move them along the river walk and so forth. Uh, there's even been an, uh, an outreach to uh, some folks with remote control cars, believe it or not, that also help move geese along in areas where they are gathering along the river walk and so forth. Do not laugh about this stuff. <laughs> I take this very seriously. Um, I won't tell you about the remote control boats then if, if we're going to laugh about the cars. But, but just I, I think what we're trying to do basically is, is a very humane way is, is, is to keep the geese moving along and to um, avoid conflicts um, in those spaces and understand that, you know, you know why, why we go through our, pr our plan and our program and working with the uh, Ohio Department of Natural Resources, we are, again, you know, working with the, the, within the laws that we need to follow um, to help protect them as well. So um, with that said, we ask that you please one of, the great, one of the things that people can actually really help us with is please don't feed the geese. That's a huge help for us. And we do have signs up in our parks with that. We're also asking for help. We are. If you're out and about or if you want to get involved with us, um, give us a call at 221-5195. Um, again, just trying to keep things moving in a, in a, in a fashion that, that keeps the geese in uncomfortable spots, which means they'll move somewhere else. So we're looking for folks that have dogs that would like to... <laughs> yes, yes, we, we, yes. We, we've reached out to, to folks who, who uh, particularly the border collies, who like to come along and, and, and take them along and go out into spaces that will harass the geese in around the ponds and so forth. But as we do read, if the dog doesn't go into the pond, the geese jump in the pond, sit there and kind of laugh at them and then move on. But uh, anything that does, seriously, anything that we can do to, if you think you can help us, um, even with the RCs, the remote control uh, cars and, and our boats, uh, we've also looked at some possibilities with drones uh, just to help move the geese in a fashion that doesn't harm them or create uh, any issues with the public. All right? Thank you, Mayor. This, this really comes down to trying to keep areas, I mean, lots of geese means lots of manure. And so we're trying to keep the public spaces, the river walks, the parks um, uh, clean. And bottom line, we want it to be clean and we want it to be safe for folks to be bicycling and walking and the like. So, uh, and uh, you know, one goose isn't a problem. 50 geese, that's a problem. So uh, we're, we're trying to best manage that in a way that, uh, uh, as Rick said, protects them but also protects the public and, and the parks. Um, lastly, this morning, I want to uh, comment on two things that were in Council's packet the other night. Uh, we um, informed uh, Lima City Council that the City of Lima has joined 80, more than 80 other cities 
uh, in Ohio in filing a lawsuit against the state of Ohio challenging Senate Bill uh, 331. Um, Senate Bill 331 was uh, approved late last year um, and signed by uh, Governor Kasich uh, in March. And what it does is allow wireless um, uh, service providers to basically attach their equipment or install their equipment in public right-of-ways without any um, consideration for public controls. Um, and this can be antennae, this can be uh, boxes that could uh, basically go on our uh, even our traffic uh, lights, our utility poles, um, and, and they can do that under this law without our consent. Um, so uh, uh, it, it's really a pretty outrageous invasion uh, in uh, the city's um, uh, home rule authority uh, and our ability to manage our public uh, rights away. Um, so uh, the first action that we, we've taken is to join in the lawsuit, uh, but um, uh, we have also on uh, uh, the council's agenda, and they acted positively on this. Um, uh, council also adopted an ordinance um, which um, uh, allows some limited control and oversight, um, and uh, that involves a pre-application process uh, with the Public Works Department. Uh, this is not uh, to our satisfaction in terms of being able to to manage this uh, appropriately, but it l at least gives us some ability to review and, it, and things won't suddenly be installed without us being at least knowledgeable of what's occurring. Um, again, this, these, the bill permits cell phone providers, for example, to install signal towers up to 50 feet high, which could be in any public right-of-way. Uh, that just shouldn't be allowed. We should have the ability to say it can go here or it can go there, but can't go anywhere they like it. So um, this is being challenged. I can also tell you that when the uh, mayors from the 12th Senate District met recently with uh, uh, Senator Huffman, uh, we addressed this issue with him. He was not in the legislature last year when this uh, uh, came up. He wasn't familiar with it. He uh, promised to investigate it and get back to us. I think he understands because he was previously um, also a local government official as president of city council. He understands the zoning issues and our concerns. So we're hopeful that um, um, ultimately this gets resolved with, um, uh, with a legislative fix that truly does respect uh, the rights of home rule uh, rights of, of municipalities. Uh, but in case it doesn't, we're in court and we're going to fight it. So I believe that's all that we have uh, for today and we'll break down for interviews. Thank you.